So we will call to order this meeting of the MPO Policy Committee meeting of November 13th, 2020. Uh, do we have any introductions, um, proxies for anybody that you need noted? Hi all, this is Nate Nickel, proxy for Adam Wason, City of Bloomington Public Works Department. Thank you, Nate. Do, do we need to do a formal roll call for the sake of those people in the public who we will, we will for the votes. All of our votes will be roll call. Okay. Oh, Lisa, this is Scott Robinson, uh, Director for Planning and Transportation. I'm serving as the mayor's uh, proxy today. All right. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Okay. So um, next item is approval of the agenda. Move to approve the agenda. Second. So we have a motion and yeah. a second. Uh, do we have any comments? Any public comments? Uh, Pat, do you want to do the roll? Sure. Uh, Jason Bannock. Yes. Um, sorry, just a second here. Uh, Nate Nickel. Yes. Okay. Um, Dave Warren. Yes. Okay, Scott Robinson. Yes. Okay. Uh, Ken McDaniel. Yes. Okay, Penny Githens. Yes. Thank you. Um, Pam Samples. Yes. Okay, Matt Flaherty. Yes. Sarah. Yes. And Kate Wiltz. Yes. And Lisa Ridge. Yes. Thank you. Vote passes. Uh, one, two. Well, one, two, three, four. Well, it passes. <laughs> okay. It sounds, sounded unanimous. Trust my yeah. math, please. Unanimous. Unanimous. Okay. Okay. So the next item is approval of the minutes for October 9th, 2020. Move to approve. Second. So we have a motion and a second. Any comments from the board? Uh, Pat, you want to do a roll on that? Sure. Uh, Jason Bannock. Yes. Um, sorry, just a second. Um, Nate Nickel. Yes. Dave Warren? Yes. Sorry that I'm not used to doing this. Scott Robinson? Yes. Kent McDaniel? Yes. Pam Samples? Yes. Uh, Penny Gethins? Yes. Matt Clarity? Yes. Sarah Ryderban. Yes. Kate Wiltz. Yes. Lisa Ridge. Yes. Okay, vote passes again unanimously. Okay, moving on from our two communications from the chair. Um, I think I just want to say I know this is our last meeting for 2020 for the MPO Policy Committee. Um, hard to believe, actually. But I just want to thank everybody for everybody trying to attend when we had to under these um, different conditions this year. Hopefully um, 2021 will be a lot different and hopefully we'll get to see each uh, everybody in, uh, in person someday again. So um, that is all I have. Um, Sarah, do you have anything? Uh, well, would you like the report from CAC? I can do that. I can go on. I was just doing it since you were vice chair. Oh, well, I'm as thankful as anyone else that we're all still alive. So this is good. Absolutely. So wishing everybody a rest of 2020 a healthy year since we probably won't be crossing paths during the next few weeks. Um, reports from officers and com or committees is um, Citizens Advisory Committee. 
Yes, uh, the CAC reviewed the INDOT statewide target performance measures at the last meeting and recommended approval. There was also some comment about the fact that our MTP uh, is looking at a zero um, safety, you know, looking at zero deaths in safety while the state is targeting any large number of deaths. So um, that we're just way ahead of the, the curve on this one. And I just hope we reach our safety goal. That's it. Thank you, Sarah. Um, Technical Advisory Committee. Yeah, this is Lou May. I'm chair of the TAC. And at the last TAC meeting, the committee reviewed the NDOT statewide target performance measures and voted to recommend approval to the MPO Policy Committee. That's it for us, thank you. Thank you, Lou. Uh, reports from the MPO staff, um, seeing none. And then we move on to new business, NDOT statewide target performance measures. Hey, Lisa. Yes. Um, is there any way they could make this agenda bigger? A while ago it was bigger on my screen and now it's real small and I can't read it. Yeah, I see the same thing, Pam. Oh, that's better. Yeah, that's better. Thank you. But it still cuts off the right edge of the page. Lisa? That's, better. that's much yeah. better. I was wondering <laughs> if um, while staff doesn't have a report, I'm really kind of hoping that they would give us an update on the MTP and where it stands, especially with respect to INDOT, INDOT, the last we heard, had given no feedback whatsoever. Um, so I'm wondering if we have had any feedback from INDOT in terms of the MTP. Well, it's funny you should ask. Um, I submitted the MTP and just shortly after the committee gave approval, I went through a final time to make sure nothing was missing, made submissions. And then I also made a telephone call, a cell phone call to somebody at, at NDOT. They weren't there. And then uh, I didn't hear back. And then about a week later, a call came back to my office desk, which I'm not at. I mean, they'd receive, they would review it and they would have it approved very quickly. Well, here it is the 13th of November, <laughs> and I still don't have an approval letter. Uh, so I will do a follow-up on Monday uh, because I wanna make sure that they they give us the approval for the MTP prior to the end of this month. I mean, that was the target all along. That's all I have. Thank you. Sure, thanks for asking. So, um, Pat, are you ready for new business, the NDOT statewide target performance measures? Yes. Yes. Uh, this is in a series of letters, and this is similar to what we did beginning in 2018. I think we did an update in 2019 also on certain selected performance measures. And then we also have an adoption resolution at the end of this, too. And if this is approved by the board, then Lisa would sign these letters and I would submit all of these to end up. And this would clear us with the Federal Highway Administration. Under the current legislation, the FAST Act, um, all the states are required to issue performance standards or performance measures, I should say, in various categories. And this is written directly from the congressional legislation the MPOs are, are required to either agree with NDOT's measures or adopt their own independent measures that are measurable by the Federal Highway Administration. And then all of the MPOs in Indiana, all of us adopt NDOT's measures simply because that's the, the easiest course. Um, the ones that we have today, the first one is pavement condition, target performance measures, and the letter is right there which one did you start with? Oh, you started um, with? The first one says safety target performance. Okay. Sorry, that's on the back of the page. Okay, here it is. I'm sorry. 
Uh, okay, the first one is safety, where they measure the number of fatalities, the rate, rate of fatalities per 100, mile, 100 million vehicle miles traveled, which are down, by the way, this year, a number of serious injuries, serious injuries per 100 million, and the number of non-motorized fatalities and non-motorized serious injuries. Amir, could you scroll down, please? Thank you. Um, the number of fatalities that they're projecting for 2021 is 817.3. And then the question always comes, where did the 0.3 come from? And the answer is it's an average over several years. This is a five-year rolling average. And then uh, the less than or equal to is our addition uh, based on a recommendation several years ago from Sarah. We maintain that in there and Dot didn't tell us to take it out. So we're leaving it in. So we're projecting, they're projecting 117.3 fatalities. That's down considerably from what it, what it currently looks like it will happen in 2020 and also down from 2019. And then the rate of fatalities per million vehicle miles traveled, 1.006. Get off, Amir. There it is. Okay, thank you. Uh, number of serious injuries, uh, 3,311.4. Rate of serious injuries per 100 million vehicle miles traveled, 4.088. And the number of non-motorized fatalities and serious injuries, 3.93.6. And that's roughly the same as, as what's occurring right now. Okay, then the next, would you like to vote on these individually or? I got a together. question actually, if you don't mind on, and maybe I missed this, but on the number of fatalities, 817.3, that's five year rolling average. Is that 18? Yes. 817.3, where? That's not, I mean, 817. In, in the in state where, of Indiana. In geographical area. The entire state. Okay. Thank you. In dot, the entire in dot state state system and even the local system for okay. that matter. That, Thank you. Yeah, it's it's on an interstate or, or a state route or even on a local road and street for that matter. That's how many they're projecting for the entire state of Indiana for for what is that 2021. Is that does that yeah, help? Th thank you. Thank you. Um, I don't have a problem of voting on these all at once if the if everybody else is okay with that. And so you don't have to do four different roles, um, roll calls, but. I have one more question if we're gonna to move to a vote. What, what are the consequences of any of this? If we, I mean, we can't meet a statewide total. So I, I know if, this is a requirement, we have to do this, but what are if, the consequences? If Enda, well, if NDOT fails to meet a target, they're automatically penalized 10% of their surface transportation block grant okay. funds. Okay, all right, I are get automatically, it. Automatically reallocated to safety funds, to high high hazard safety funds. So they, they would have- For Indiana or for everybody? Yes. Okay. okay. Indiana. Okay, great, yeah. thank you for yeah. that. So they would, they would have they would have a decline in funding for what I would call maintenance preservation or system capacity. And then that, that would be redirected instead to safety projects. Thank you. So far they've, they, they've never failed to meet their target. They've always been under the target so far. Okay. I have, I have a quick question. Sure. Um, about these performance measures. And I, I apologize for not just Googling this before the meeting, but um, for these well, measures, right. for, for these measures, are they associated with any um, specific geographic data so that, you know, you could pull pull these data and, and map them and do spatial analysis? Um, yes. Okay. Yes. yes. Uh, it comes from, well, these are these are averages, these are annual averages, but NDOT, Federal Highway Administration has a site, and I'll try and find the site for you. Uh, Federal Highway Administration has a site uh, which shows 
where congestion points are within Indiana, also where all the crashes are, and then also uh, the volumes, uh, pavement condition, and also the bridge condition, and the truck travel time congestion points, that's all, that's all shown on a GIS database too. Okay, and so for something like a, a fatality or a um, you know non motor non motorist injury, uh, are those are those individual events attached to like a, a street, like an address or an intersection or something like that? They're showing. I mean, the map that I called up the other day, uh, it showed a point, showed showed points, for example, here in Bloomington. Okay. But they didn't have the precise location. Okay. And the precise location comes in in the way of uh, the crash reports that are reported to the state police by all the law enforcement agencies, including the state police themselves. And then we download that data in January of every year for an annual data, and then we look at look at all of that. So anything that's a fatality, we automatically will will go into a roadway safety audit. Okay. to do an examination of why did this happen? Is there something wrong with the roadway or, or was it weather conditions or was there something that, that, you know, that contributed to the accident as part of the built environment? Uh, we can't, can't take into account individual behavior, but what we attempt to do is roll out, rule out the, the built environment as being a causal factor. Okay. If, we, we also have a, an annual accident report that breaks things down in our MPO based on intersections that it breaks it down, well, with, you know, automobile, bicycle, pedestrian, fatality. That's great. Injuries. It's on a web page. Well, we haven't had it for several years and someone, not me, is under the gun to get that done. And, and I can talk about that later. Do you have any other questions about the safety? safety no, but thank you. Target? Okay. Uh, so is the next one? On? Uh, next one's pavement condition. Okay, it is pavement. All right, thank you. All right, pavement condition. If you'll scroll to that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Amir. Scroll to that. Um, this shows you what the report card values were for 2017, 2018, 2019. And then the two-year target, uh, the two-year target would be 20 and 21. And the four-year target would be the average of 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. Um, there are no changes in two of those, uh, but just be, need to be aware that the percentage of pavements on the non-interstate NHS national highway system, that is, in good conditions, uh, has remained the same, 78.7% and 78.7%. And the percentage of pavements on the non-interstate non-national highway system in poor condition has also remained the same, 3.1% and 3.1%. And that's, I mean, the values are right there. And those are the values that NDOT gave us. So we're more or less taking everything they say and say yes or yes or three bags full. And, and these are what they are. Questions on the pavement at all? Yes. Pavement rating? Yes. Um, okay. we, yes. We sign on to this, but we, we can't, we don't have any impact on it. These are national roads. So why do yes. they expect us to yes. do that? It's part of the legislation. Legislation requires that the metropolitan planning organizations either agree with NDOT's, uh, NDOT's target measures or we, the MPO, uh, develop our own individual measure. It's a quirk in the legislation and I'm sorry, I, you know, I, it doesn't make any sense, but it makes sense in, in the sense that Congress wants to make sure that NDOT is sharing these values with the MPOs and that the MPOs agree that these are reasonable. And if they're not reasonable, then we, the MPO, have the option adopting a different measure. Is that, is that logical? 
Absolutely not, but, <laughs> but we don't get any control over it. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Ours agree. is not the reason why. <laughs> yeah. Um, Thank you. Yeah, there, there, there's a famous quote in Blazing Saddles, Mongo just pawn in Power Man's game. <laughs> and that's kind of what we are here. Um, okay. Pat, just a, yes. a question on the... the percentage of pavement in the interstate system. Any inkling on, on why that percentage of good condition went down between 2017 and 2019? That pretty significant downgrade there. I really don't know. I mean, I, when did Indiana, well, Indiana refused to, to raise the gas tax for quite some time. I don't think they actually raised the gas tax until what, 2017, the end of 2017? And there was an infusion of new money. Uh, they were wholly reliant on, on federal funds for their pavement system. And then once they received the infusion of funds by indexing the gas tax also uh, with the in inflation factor, um, then the funds started increasing going toward paving. And I believe that's probably the only explanation that I can give. Does that make sense, um, Nate. Nate? Does that make sense? Yeah, just that kind of a significant change. So, just curious. Thank you. I agree. I agree, and I and I can't explain it. I mean, that's on the NHS system too. Man. Do you know if that's comparable to other to other states that that he? Yes. Did? Okay. Yes. Yes. These are all comparable to every other state in the union. Oh, I, I, I just um, mean, is that is that huge um, reduction in um, percent of, of good condition interstates in, I assume that's an Indiana number, right? It's an Indiana number. In, yes, do you know if, if that reduction is is similar across states or if, if Indiana just looks really bad on this? I really don't know. I mean, Indiana is in, well, they're being a crossroads state. Um, we're one of the few states that has so much through traffic, overhead trap, I call it overhead traffic, like you would call it in railroads. You have overhead traffic or through traffic here, pavement tends to deteriorate faster uh, than it does in, in some of the other states, um, say for a Missouri or an Alabama or um, even a Georgia for that matter. Uh, the bigger states, I mean, we're a smaller state in terms of geographical size, but we have a higher concentration of traffic traveling through. And, and the commercial traffic traveling through, too, is going to the destinations of Kansas City, St. Louis, Chicago, Nashville, uh, and other, other destinations on the East Coast or on the West Coast. So the answer is... Yeah, it's, it, it's probably a realistic number in terms of uh, what we get in the way of through traffic. And, and the, the commercial traffic commercial traffic is what determines, go ahead, Dave. Uh, commercial traffic is what determines uh, pavement deterioration too because the damage done by, by tractor trailer combinations is something like a 20, 20 times factor of an automobile car or a passenger car. Does that answer your question? Okay. Anybody else? Um, yeah, because I'm looking at the target for percentage of pavements in the interstate system in good condition. And our four-year target brings us up to 84% from the 56%. And in with all of the money going towards new construction, as we have seen in our neighborhood. I'm wondering where all the funding is going to come from and whether INDOT really has a plan in the next four years to bring all of the interstates up to, well, at least up to 84% of them in good condition, and what that's going to mean for all of this traffic crossing the state of Indiana. I think what they did I don't know what they're doing in the way of new construction throughout the state, other than 
finishing the Interstate 69 corridor from Martinsville to Indianapolis. I don't know if they're doing any other new construction activities at all in the state. But I do know with the infusion of money that they got from the gas tax uh, increase several years ago and the indexing of those gas tax, what they did was they reallocated that money to the state. And then the money, the federal money that was normally going to state roads was was highlighted more toward the, the interstate system. They're maxing out, they're maximizing their use of all the interstate funding. Uh, interstate funding deter for, for pavements also is a different rate. Um, I mean, they calculate, I believe they calculate pavement deterioration at something like a 10 to a 12 years life. Uh, so it depends on where you are in the life of the statewide cycle of pavements. On the state system, pavement condition typically lasts almost 20 years. If it's a state route, you'll get you'll get 20 to 20 odd years, 24, 25 years on some pavements. But on interstate, usually you have to do a resurfacing every 10 to 12 years. And and so it just depends on, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I was just wondering, what's it gonna mean in terms of what's happened with gas sales and therefore gas tax? in trying to reach that four-year target? Well, there's gonna be a problem there. <laughs> uh, under, under current revenue streams, uh, they will have difficulty achieving their revenue targets that they have. The, the revenue that they're, they're projecting to put toward the projects, you know, they're gonna have extreme difficulty on that. Um, what they're, I think what they're looking for, what they're praying for is a large infrastructure bill on the congressional level come January, February. Uh, the FAST Act is up for reauthorization. It's under a continuing resolution right now. Uh, and the look, they're looking to do a reauthorization of the Surface Transportation Act either in January, February, or March. And the number being trotted out is that's two with a, tree, a trillion, a two T, uh, number is is the number being proposed by the new administration coming into Washington, D.C. Now, whether Congress goes along with that, I don't know. That depends on what the breakout is on, on the congressional side and on the Senate side. But the so, answer, the answer is, the answer is they're, they're hurting. Pat, I'm curious because you, you pointed out to us that if we don't meet the safety measures, then the money comes to actual safety, if we don't meet yes. the interstate or pavement conditions, where does that money go? I don't know. I don't know okay. what happens. Okay, I, th I think, yeah, I, I, I really don't know that answer. I believe they have to redirect a certain portion of their projects instead of doing capacity projects, they would have to do pavement and they would have to do bridge condition first rather than doing capacity because that's the order the order of priority is always safety preservation and maintenance capacity and then new facilities so i mean the logic would be that if they don't meet the targets for pavement or bridge that they would have to take money from capacity projects in other words added travel lanes or something like that thank you uh -huh. Anybody else? Pat? Um, yes. Just looking at the the text in the letter and the table, um, it, it appears that from the headings in the table that the percentages are targets. Yes. Um, but we're talking about them as though they're actuals, which I think is what is intended. Um, am I, is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, they're targets. Okay. Well, it might be, it might be, I mean, I, maybe it says target performance measures at the top of the table. I'm not sure. Maybe if a, a little clarity there might be helpful. I don't know for whom. Oh, but for instead me, it of actual. Been. <laughs> oh, I instead of thinking. actual. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I, I yeah, no, I understand. Uh, yeah, these are the targets. These are the values that they submitted to the Federal Highway Administration in 2017, 2018, 2019. As, as the actual then, conditions. 
as as the targets and then the actual yeah they they submitted targets and then these are the actuals 17 17 18 and 19 are the actuals um, I don't know what their what their targets were initially uh, so you can see that the four-year target is more than average mm -hmm. in there and that that's really the target the other is reality I see. And that makes sense from what you, you were, from the discussion we were having. It's just that perhaps um, I'm sorry. writing, writing yeah. that on there would help. It, yeah, I should have. My small brain. Uh, no, 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 no. I can see it. I, I mean, I was just taking what they gave us and I put it into a table. Well, and um, yeah, I doing... I'm sure they'll understand. Yeah. It. Just. Yeah. Yeah. It, but these are, yeah. 17, 18, 19 are actuals. And then the two-year target is, is really the, the projected and the four-year target is projected also. So they're projecting that they're gonna go from, for example, in the interstate in 2019, they're projecting they're gonna go from 56.5% up to 84.2. That's a lot of paving. That's an awful lot yes, of paving. Yes, it is. You need like an infrastructure year for that, mm -hmm. gotta upgrade from infrastructure week. That's a bad joke, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to no, think I'm, like an engineer, but I'm really, yeah, I'm trying to think like an engineer, but I'm really a planner, but really an economist. So. <laughs> okay, Does, any other questions on pavement condition target? If not, I, I can move on to bridge. Amir, could you scroll down to bridge, please? Okay, then the bridge condition targets performance measures. Uh, the present of uh, national highway system bridges classified in good condition. Again, here you see, and clarifying, thanks to Kate, 17, 2017, 2018, 2019 are actual. And then the two-year target is what they project. And then the four-year target is what they project also, uh, where they project that 48, is that right? Yeah, that's right. 48%, 48.3% of the National Highway System bridges will be classified in good condition. Now, the National Highway System includes the entire interstate system and what I would call the, the primary corridors Sea Road 46 is on the is on the is on the national highway system. Uh, something like uh, something like State Road 39 or State Road 42 is not. Uh, so these national highway systems are are the ones of national significance. Uh, the percentage of national highway system bridges classified in poor condition. Uh, you can see the actual there in 2017, 2018, 2019, very, very low. Uh, and then the two-year target is roughly the same, stays the same, and the four-year target stays the same at just 2%, which is very good because when I, previously when I worked at NDOT, we had as high as 10% or so. And the last thing you want to do is cross a bridge that's in poor condition, one of those 10% bridges. Any questions about bridges at all? Okay, if not, I'll move on to the last one. Mayor, could you scroll down again, please? Okay, this is truck travel time, reliability, <laughs> target performance, and don't try and say that fast. Um, the truck time reliability, the two, this is the 2019 and 2021 interstate reliability targets based on truck travel time reliability indexes are, for the two year they're looking at 1.27. Now one, 1 1.00 means that they're performing, performing at capacity or below 1.0, in other words, a 0 0.9 means that they're, they're performing below capacity. 1.27 means that they're 27% above capacity. Uh, so the truck time, the 
truck time, travel time reliability for two years is 1.27. The four-year target is 1.24. In other words, they look to reduce the congestion on the national highway system by, by only three hundredths of a percent. And then the reliability four-year target is, is 1.30. Uh, and that's based on the fact that they've had poor performance in the past outside of, outside of what we're seeing here in, this, in the data that they gave us. And this is different than what they've given us before because usually it, before it was always on the interstate truck time, travel time and now it's on the, uh, the entire system. Question? Anybody? It's as clear as my... Okay, Lisa, all yours. Yep. Okay, so um, we would have to have a motion to um, for these uh, state performance measures. Move to recommend approval. This is Scott, a second. So we have a motion and a second. Do we have any comments, questions from the board? And do we have any public comment? Seeing or hearing, hearing none, I'm ready for roll call. Jason Bannix. Yes. Um, I'm sorry, Nate Nickel. Yes. Uh, Dave Warren. Yes. Uh, Scott Robinson. Yes. Uh, Kent McDaniel. Yes. Uh, Penny Githens. Yes. Pam Samples. Yes. Matt Flaherty. Yes. Sarah Ryderband. Yes. Kate Wills. Yes. Lisa Ridge. Yes. I don't think I missed anybody. Uh, vote passes unanimously again. Thank you, Patrick. Um, so Thank next, you. Item, next item is communications from committee members, non-agenda items, um, suggestions for any future for future agendas. As Pat knows, I'm really looking forward to a cash crash report. And, and since he said he's been looking, I have a feeling that maybe he's been addressing that. Uh, behind the scenes that that's being worked on and you'll see something in January. Uh, the other thing, the other thing that you'll see in January, at least the citizens advisory and technical will see in January is a large in-dot dump project, a dump of projects. Uh, in dot just, just 15 minutes before this meeting started, in dot sent us a list of brand new projects. They did a call for projects in uh, January, February, March of this year. And they went through the, the selection process and they have sent us a list of projects. It's a, it's a big list. Uh, so we will be going through transportation improvement program amendments starting in January and February, possibly March uh, to add new projects into our transportation improvement program. And all of these will be NDOT projects uh, the local projects are locked in until 2024, uh, just given current funding, unless Congress comes up with extra money. That's it. Could you and forward? Um, could you forward that list of projects? Yes. Okay. Yes, it's a raw list, but I'll I'll forward it to you. Yeah, uh, you I'd want me to forward? You want me to forward to the entire committee? I can. That's. I mean, I I'm interested just to see what the projects that are um, you know upcoming. So I'm sure everybody on the committee would like to see it. I don't. Yeah, want to I, everybody, but yeah, I, it was it, it was in a giant giant database of several thousand projects, and I sorted it by Bloomington MPO. But then I looked at the bottom, and there were statewide projects. So the statewide projects, I don't know how many of those apply to us. I think virtually all of them. So I can't give you an exact number, but yeah, I'll forward the, the database to you. Okay. So that way you can, and, and again, recognize that this is raw. They sent it to us 
uh, asking us to review all the data for our respective area, which will take a while, but it won't delay the crash report. Great. I promise. <laughs> and I know the crash reports are behind. We usually have ours done for the county in the summer, but actually we should have ours done probably within the next probably two weeks or so, two to three weeks. So. Yeah. Well, in the MPT, yeah, MPT, MTP uh, took the vast bulk of our time this year. I mean, that, right. that, was, a, that was a huge lift. And that's it's the first time we've done the Metropolitan Transportation Plan with 100% staff without using a consultant. And uh, I don't know if I'll ever go through that again or not, uh, because it was pretty painful. But then, then again, you as the community and a policy committee, you got a custom metropolitan transportation plan that you would not have gotten from a consultant. So kudos to you. Well, kudos well, to you and the staff. And you had to do it remotely in terms of <laughs> connecting <laughs> with the public. Oh, I know, I know, I know. And Federal, and Federal Highway kept coming back. Make sure you get the public involved. <laughs> what do we do? We do, the library's closed. We can't go to BT, we can't, yeah. It was, it, yeah, the, the challenge was, was extreme. Uh, but fortunately, the survey is really what saved our bacon. Uh, and the response rate on that, on that survey was tremendous. Uh, and in fact, we may, we may receive a best practice award for that survey and for the plan. Or at least I've, <laughs> I'm hitting dot. In dot and federal highway up for that for some sort of recognition award for the plan because no other MPO did what we did with just with two people. Well, proud to have you, Patrick and Ryan. Thank you. Um, upcoming meetings, policy committee, um, January 8th, 2021 at 1 30. These are all still going to be virtual meetings. Technical advisory committee, November 18th, uh, 2021 at 10 a.m. and Citizens Advisory Committee, November 18th, 2021 at 6.30 p.m. And I believe we are ready for adjournment. Everybody have a remainder safe and healthy year and uh, we'll see you in 2021.